As World War II reached its crescendo, the skies above Europe would bear witness to an aerial duel like no other. The P-51 Mustang, the pride of the Allied forces, had established its dominance, cutting through the Luftwaffe with precision. But as the Allies celebrated their victories and the invasion of Normandy, a new shadow began to cast doubt on their air supremacy. An American pilot, atop his formidable P-51 Mustang, patrolled confidently over the vast expanse. The calm sky, however, held a secret. In a heartbeat, a blur streaked past him, its speed and silence unlike anything he'd ever encountered. Before he could even process the event, the aircraft had vanished, leaving only a fleeting memory of its presence. But it wasn't gone for long. Emerging from the clouds, the sleek form of the ME-262 Swallow, the Luftwaffe's secret weapon, revealed itself. The world's first jet interceptor was not just a rumor, it was real and it was ready to challenge the best fighter America had to offer. The stage was set, propeller against jet, experience against innovation. As the two aerial titans locked eyes, preparing for their inevitable clash, the air grew thick with tension. Who would emerge as the master of the skies? Though initially developed by North American aviation for the British Royal Air Force, the P-51 Mustang was later adopted by the American military when it joined the fray against the Axis. It soon became the workhorse of the United States Army Air Forces, and one of the most recognizable and iconic aircraft of World War II. It had become one of the finest piston-engine fighters by the end of the war, capable of fighting the battle-tested Luftwaffe's Messerschmitt Bf-109s, Focke-Wulf Fw-190s, and other remarkable fighters of the period head on. The P-51 Mustang's combination of design, performance, and engineering excellence made it a standout fighter of its time. It featured a sleek, aerodynamic design with a bubble canopy for improved visibility. The elliptical wing shape enhanced maneuverability and reduced drag. The tailwheel landing gear allowed for better ground handling. The Mustang also featured an advanced airfoil design that increased high performance at various altitudes. It could achieve an impressive top speed of around 437 miles per hour at high altitudes and a superior climb rate of 3,200 feet per second. In addition, the Mustang could extend its range with drop tanks for long-range escort missions to protect American bombers flying over Germany. All these impressive feats could only be accomplished thanks to the Packard-built Rolls-Royce Merlin V1650 engine. An efficient two-stage supercharger provided consistent performance at high altitudes, resulting in a reliable fighter optimal for air combat. Although it was primarily used as a long-range escort fighter, it was an excellent dogfighter due to its maneuverability and main armament, six 50 caliber machine guns, six to ten T-64 HVAR rockets and bombs. Nevertheless, as the war neared its end, the reliable Mustang would face its toughest opponent, a German Wunderwaffe, or Wonder Weapon the world's first operational jet fighter, the ME-262. The Messerschmitt ME-262, nicknamed Schwalbe, or Swallow, was one of the Reich's most concealed top-secret projects. Near the end of the war, the Luftwaffe desperately introduced this fighter to change the outcome of the war, giving way to the jet age. The ME-262 easily outflew the best Allied escorts, including the Mustang, as it could fly at more than twice the speed of sound, achieving a top speed of over 741 miles per hour. It could climb at altitudes of over 50,000 feet and wreak havoc on Allied bomber formations. The ME-262 was made almost entirely of aluminum, had a wingspan of 40 feet, a length of 39 feet, a height of 12 feet, and a gross weight of 13,250 pounds. The groundbreaking twin-engine configuration with Yumo 004 turbojet engines mounted under the wings gave the jet fighter unmatched speed above the skies. Quick acceleration, climb rate, and superior performance at high altitudes were due to the jet engine's immediate thrust. This followed the Swallow's main role as a jet-powered interceptor for countering Allied bomber formations. Initially conceived to protect German cities from being pummeled by bomber groups, the changing circumstances of the war pushed it into different combat roles in later stages. Coupled with its streamlined fuselage and swept back wings for reduced drag and enhanced speed, the Swallow was difficult to spot by Allied aircraft, especially when it attacked bomber formations from different angles. The ME-262's armament comprised four lethal Mark 108 30mm cannons that could quickly eliminate American bombers and escort fighters with accurate shots. The Swallows proved their worth in combat, 
and left their print in the annals of air warfare due to their combat prowess and introduction of hit-and-run attacks to make up for their inferior production numbers. The Swallow surpassed the P-51 Mustang by over 120 miles per hour. It was so fast that Allied pilots could barely see them to engage them during combat. Although their small numbers never put the overwhelming Allied air dominance into question, the ME-262 still gave the Anglo-Americans a headache, leading them to adopt new tactics to even the odds. The most basic counter-tactic by the Army Air Forces was to attack the ME-262s where they were the most vulnerable, on the ground. Allied fighters would constantly patrol German air bases where they were certain ME-262s were stationed. Reconnaissance aircraft would alert the American aircraft when the Swallows were on the runway or about to land so that they could strafe the base and destroy the jet fighter before they took off or landed. B-17 Flying Fortresses and other bombers would also directly bomb facilities where Swallows were stationed or built to get rid of them before they left the production line. Another obvious tactic the U.S. and British Air Commands adopted was to use their numerical superiority to simply overwhelm the small squads of ME-262s during combat. The Allied fighters would attack from several directions, forcing the German pilots to either join the fray and risk being shot down from multiple angles or leave the area before being surrounded. It was not uncommon for the Anglo-Americans to bait lone ME-262s into larger formations of friendly aircraft to ambush them before the German pilots even noticed. In another ingenious move, P-51 Mustang crews made the best of their top-notch range by forcing the chasing ME-262s to spend their limited fuel to engage them in prolonged dogfights. Commando Novotny, a specialized Luftwaffe fighter group tasked with honing tactics for the Messerschmitt ME-262, was named after their leader, Major Walter Novotny, one of the most highly decorated pilots in the world. After rigorous training, on October 7, 1944, the group was ready for operational action. That day, a formation of ME-262s, under the leadership of Luftwaffe ace Hauptmann Georg Peter Eder, revved up at Akmer Aerodrome, setting sights on intercepting Allied bombers targeting pivotal oil installations. But just as their engines roared to life and they slid across the taxiways, Eder's jet experienced an engine failure. With his mission halted, the three remaining jets persisted, their engines echoing anticipation. That's when calamity struck from above. First Lieutenant Urban L. Drew, piloting a P-51D, bore down on them like a hawk. Drew, leading the 375th Fighter Squadron and escorting a squadron of B-17 bombers from a refinery raid, was soaring above Achmer. The unmistakable profile of the German jets grabbed his attention. He watched keenly, waiting for the jets to become airborne. Spotting his window of opportunity, he lunged into a dive. Latching onto the tail of an ME-262, Drew opened fire. The German jet, newly airborne, was quickly peppered with hits. Moments later, it erupted into a fireball, consumed by fierce flames just above the tarmac. With adrenaline surging, Drew spied another ME-262 500 yards ahead. Wasting no time, he executed a sharp climb, guns blazing. Initially, his shots riddled the tail, but steadily, like a deadly wave, they reached the cockpit. The canopy shattered, flying off in fragmented pieces, and the ME-262 spiraled uncontrollably, the pilot trapped within. As Drew retreated, his gaze lingered on two charred ME-262 wrecks, their black smoke spiraling skyward. Though his gun camera failed during this intense aerial dance, First Lieutenant Urban L. Drew's feat was undeniable. He was recognized for taking down the first two jet aircraft of World War II. American and British pilots were initially baffled by the tremendous speed of the ME-262, finding the jet seemingly unbeatable in the skies unless they heavily overwhelmed it with numerous Allied fighters. Yet, the Mustang, even though piston-powered, had an edge in agility, range, and firepower when it engaged directly in dogfights with the jet. The Mustang's prowess, combined with the coordinated tactics and teamwork shown by Allied pilots, made them a significant challenge for the German jet fighters. Beyond its engineering brilliance, the P-51 Mustang also represented a symbol that embodied the harmonious fusion of Allied pilot skills, shared strategies, and mutual trust. When a Mustang soared, it carried the collective spirit of countless individuals, from the engineers who refined its design to the ground crews ensuring its readiness and the pilots mastering its controls. The Luftwaffe increased its sortie rate with the ME-262, 
and the intensity of the war against these jets reached its peak in November 1944. A pivotal event happened on November 8th, when Major Walter Novotny, leading Commando Novotny, took flight in an ME-262 to face the P-51s again. This ace managed to down both a four-engine bomber and a Mustang, marking his impressive 257th and 258th victories. However, during his return, a group of Mustangs intercepted and downed him. His last moments were captured in a distorted transmission over the radio before a fatal crash took him. For the Luftwaffe, the reality was grim. Out of 1,443 ME-262s that were produced, only around 300 ever saw combat. Challenges ranged from frequent design changes to the need for unique piloting techniques. Time was short, and training pilots became more difficult. Moreover, issues with the jet's engine durability required frequent replacements. However, the most significant blow came from the Mustangs equipped with advanced Merlin engines. They launched relentless attacks on Germany's fuel and aircraft industries, from which the nation couldn't recover. Not even the most technologically advanced aircraft in history could save the Third Reich. As Germany's downfall approached, American P-51s continued to challenge the ME-262s with their superior armament and agility. Intense dogfights between Mustangs and lone ME-262s grew more frequent until the very last days of the war. The P-51 showcased the peak of piston engine design and the culmination of old world thinking. While technologically outmatched, it symbolized allied unity and cooperation. Meanwhile, the ME-262, a radical leap into the future, perhaps came too late to make a difference for Germany. Yet, one can only imagine the havoc they could have wreaked if they had been mass-produced earlier in the war. After World War II, despite the rise of jet fighters, the Mustang, now called F-51, stayed as the main fighter of the United States Air Force, until aircraft like North America's F-86 took its place. Although German use of the ME-262 ended with World War II, its legacy continues in modern aviation, even today. Today, people see this aircraft not only as the world's first operational jet-powered fighter aircraft, but also as a pioneer in aircraft development. After the Third Reich fell, the United States started Operation Lusty to capture as many ME-262 materials as they could. Other Allied nations did the same. The innovations of the ME-262 set the stage for the next generation of American, British, French, and Soviet fighters. Its pioneering design laid the groundwork for subsequent jet fighters, setting new benchmarks in speed, agility, and altitude capabilities. The ME-262's influence can be seen in the wave of jet innovations that swept across the aviation industry in the post-war era.